What's up guys, Rosario here. Good morning. I'm very excited to be with you here today to talk about that's right, we're talking about Nokia. Nokia went on a bit of a tear last week when their share price jumped from around $4 to well over $6 in under a day. And this was part of the large Wall Street bets frenzy. Now, a lot of people thought maybe there's a short squeeze going on with Nokia. Maybe there's something that's happening in terms of their underlying valuation. Is this company worth more than what the market says it's worth right now? So what I'm gonna do today is do an intrinsic valuation of Nokia. So a friend and colleague of mine and myself put together a valuation of Nokia based on our knowledge through our years of finance training and our experience valuing stocks in the market. So both of us have grown our wealth through investing and my friend and colleague John McAllister actually has his career in valuing businesses. So if you're interested to find out how we get these numbers and understand, okay, what does that ticker price for a stock actually mean? Then stay tuned because I'd love to kind of explain that to you. We're going to be putting out kind of white papers and summaries of what we think different companies are valued at and hopefully help you make money over time. So you're in, if you're interested in growing your wealth, stay with us, jump in, and I'll show you exactly how we got to our valuation of Nokia and what we think it's worth and is it something that you should have in your portfolio. So to get started, let's just pull up the chart for Nokia here. So we can actually see that over the past few months, uh, Nokia has been trading around $4, you know, sometimes jumping under four, sometimes hopping over four. And then all of a sudden last week, it spiked way up just over $6.55 at its peak. And then right away it crashed back down. So why did this happen? What happened was Wall Street bets. So there was a huge frenzy and a huge media attention put on this Reddit group. And they had, I believe, just under a million members prior to the media attention and then the last several weeks they've grown over eight million members i believe they've become huge and nokia was one of those stocks that they said okay buy 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 we're going to short squeeze nokia we're going to drive the price up and get these hedge funds so was there any truth to that was that something that was going to happen um, was Nokia being uh, heavily shorted? Uh, the quick answer to that is absolutely not. Nokia was not being heavily shorted compared to any other stocks on the market. He wanted to know, okay, so we're long-term investors. We're not in with this like, okay, let's buy up a company and drive up the price regardless of what it's worth. We wanted to know, is there some underlying value to Nokia? We did a discounted cash flow analysis and looked at some comparable companies in the industry to get a valuation for Nokia to understand okay what's the share price at right now and is it worth anything now you can find tons of these valuations on the internet what we did that's a little different is we tried to say okay you know a lot of people assume that Nokia could grow they could be you know, they're having some success right now because of Huawei's kind of decline just to jump back a second Nokia actually provides a lot of the 5G equipment and infrastructure for countries in Europe and they're starting to do the same uh, around the world and they're becoming uh, an alternative to Huawei. Uh, Huawei being blocked by the US and uh, a lot of other countries for their ties to the Chinese government. Maybe Nokia could potentially uh, capture a lot of that market. Now, it turns out that there's another company called Ericsson that's actually been capturing quite a bit more of the market. So we might have to value them in a separate video, but we wanted to say, okay, let's say Nokia captures a whole bunch of this uh, 5G growth and a lot of this infrastructure is actually already in place so we might actually be behind this already um, but yeah let's just get into it let's see what happens if nokia were to actually grow what could we expect to find from them so we've got our uh, discounted cash flow valuation here uh, let's just uh, blow it up a little bit so you guys can uh, take a look here okay so there's a lot of numbers on here and i know numbers can be boring to some people but they're very important and they tell you how much a company's worth so what is the intrinsic value of a company? So what is the intrinsic, like what is a stock worth in theoretical terms and in practical terms if you uh, believe in the efficient markets hypothesis? So if you believe that markets work in the long run and that a market will eventually tell you something about a company, what it's, what it's worth, then what we can do is we can say that, okay, so the price of a stock is 
the sum of a company's future cash flows, so the money that they bring in out to infinity. So as you, and, and you obviously have to discount those because money to you today is worth more to you than money in 10 years. Just for example, I'd rather have $100 today than $100 next year because if I get $100 today, I could put that $100 in the market and I'd have $120 next year if the market goes up by 20%. Kind of that time value of money you're interested in having money now, so the money that you get in the future or that you expect to get in the future is worth less and less. So a big part of finding this valuation is first, okay, what are we expecting their actual cash in that year to be? So going out to infinity, how much are we discounting that by? So how much less do we value money next year versus this year and so on? So what we did is we looked at uh, Nokia's revenue in the past and we extrapolated that to the future. Now that's one way to do it. If you have inside information or better information on who their customers might be and how they might grow, you can do it differently. But we did a really aggressive growth rate for an established company and we said, okay, their sales are gonna grow 20% every year. Based on that, we, we calculated their revenue out uh, six years into the future, so out to 2026. And then we did what's called a terminal value calculation. So that's going from 2027 to infinity and just assuming a, a growth rate and kind of discounting back. Uh, it turns out that does it, it, it can impact uh, a company's valuation significantly, but the further out you go for your terminal value, the, the less and less impact it will have on your overall valuation. So let's take a look and see what we found here. So we got their revenue. Um, Going back, uh, we can see that in the past, 2020, 2019, their revenues were sitting at around 5.29 billion. And 2019, they were ab about 6.9 billion. So the revenue dropped quite a bit in 2020 compared to 2019, but that's okay. We assume that they have bounced back. Um, so we looked at their cash flows as well. Um, in terms of uh, net cash into the company, uh, cash from operating activities. They did have a uh, positive cash flow, which is a good sign. You want to have cash coming into a business because if you run out of cash as a company, uh, you have to shut down. That's, that's basically how it works. Uh, using those values, we kind of projected out at that 20% growth rate, which is optimistic. If you ask me, we projected out the value of Nokia over the next six years. Uh, we looked at their operating costs. We had them grow at kind of a similar rate to what they're growing now. And then we looked at their gross profit, um, kept their margins uh, similar and increased them slightly. And then came out with the uh, earnings before interest and taxes, deducted taxes. To find their cash flow, you have to add back depreciation and their change in networking capital and subtracted out their capital expenditures to get their uh, future cash flows. So these are what we thought um, over the next six years that aggressively Nokia might be able to pull into the company. So this is how much cash is coming into Nokia based on operating activities. This is the money that drives that value that we're talking about. So that's what Nokia is bringing to the market. That's what they're earning and that's what their stock um, could be worth. Then what we what we did is we needed to understand, okay, how much do we have to discount those future cash flows by? So we needed to find their beta and uh, their WAC, so their weighted average cost of capital. So that's that discount rate that I was talking about. And we uh, we looked at a few different sources. So we have access to the uh, Reuters Icon software. So they have a beta for Nokia of about 0.76. Our calculated beta, which we found that the beta of Nokia is 0.88. So pretty close to what Reuters and Yahoo have found. What this beta means is it's just like, okay, when the market goes up, does Nokia go up and, and how much does it go up compared to the market? What we found is that Nokia actually has uh, a slightly lower than one beta, which means that it do, it's not as volatile as the, the average market. A company with a beta of two, for example, if the market goes up 100%, that company would go up 200% and vice versa. If the market goes down 100%, then that, uh, that company would go down 200%. It's very correlated with the market and it's actually more reactive to changes than the market. But a company with a beta of less than one means that it's slightly less reactive to changes in the market. So we can see that here. That might have something to do with Nokia being headquartered in Finland. Um, there might be some other factors at play here, but essentially that helps us find our uh, cost of capital. So understanding what our discount rate should be. Uh, looking here, um, we, we found Nokia's debt and equity, um, and we found uh, a rate of debt for them at 3%, so that's what they're paying on their debt. And then using uh, this 
formula here, which we can discuss in a later video. It's a, it's a cool formula to understand, okay, if you have your risk-free rate, which is your, uh, your rate of putting in a risk, riskless bond essentially versus your market rate, which is your rate uh, that you could get by investing in the market, then you can figure out your weighted average cost of capital. So our, our WAC or our, uh, our cost of capital here is 11.58%. So a lot of people just say, oh yeah, use 10%. But if you really do the calculations and you figure it out, like this is a very important number. So we need it to be accurate as possible with this. So we're going to use 11.58% for our discount rate. So let's pop back into the discounted cash flow statement here. These numbers are simply our future cash flow multiplied by a formula that gives us our, our discount rate for that year. So if you look, um, as you go into the future, you're, you're compounding that 11.58%. So it's getting more and more and more every single year. And so you'll see here that these numbers are discounted by more and more each time you go along. So what actually happens here is that your value of the revenue or the cash flow that's coming into the business in the future is worth less to you today because of that fact that you can put that money in the market and invest it and make a certain amount, or you could put it in this company. It's basically uh, an opportunity cost calculation. So if I invested a million dollars in Nokia, I wanna make more from that investment than if I had taken that same million dollars and put it in uh, an index fund, for example. So that's kind of where you get that cost of capital. Now you try to make it comparable. So you wanna say, okay, if I had put it in Nokia versus if I had put it in Ericsson or Huawei, but you also wanna know compared to your other alternatives, like putting it in the market in general. So we can see here that the sum of the present values of the future cash flows comes out to $15 billion. So what does that mean? Uh, that means over the next six years, we expect uh, $15 billion in present value to be generated by Nokia in cash flow. Then we did some fancy fancy calculations, excuse me. Beyond year 6, what do we expect Nokia to be worth? So to figure that out, basically we did you take their um your their cash flows in year 6 and you can assume a growth rate. Basically what you do is you uh, divide that, you divide their cash flows by the by your discount rate, subtract out your growth rate and that gives you your valuation for the terminal value. So we got about 3.4 billion. And then we add those two numbers together so over the next six years and then for year seven out to infinity and we get a enterprise value of twenty two billion nine hundred and thirteen million dollars five thousand six hundred or i guess five how many is that like five hundred and sixty one million shares or something outstanding um, if we divide those two numbers we get our share price of four dollars and eight cents all right so it looks like we've got our price target here of four dollars and eight cents per share with that, let's take a look at what Nokia is trading at right now to find out if Nokia is overvalued, undervalued, or where we're sitting. So it's trading right now at $4.24 per share, down from the peaks of over $6. And looking at that, we're pretty close to what we had expected from our valuation uh, of $4.08, looking at $4.24. So based on our valuation, we think that Nokia is actually slightly overvalued right now. Um, we would not want to buy it because we expect its intrinsic value with our aggressive valuation uh, is closer to $4. And at $4.24, that's a little bit overpriced. So Nokia is expensive. And if you're looking to get a stock at a deal right now, that might not be the stock that you're looking for. Unfortunately, what we found is that a lot of stocks on the market these days are quite a bit overvalued and the reason for that is that is we do have some theories and it has a lot to do with central banks creating a ton of money primarily uh, for pandemic relief and a lot of that money going straight into the stock market and boosting up stock prices um, if you are one of the proponents of the theory that there is a stock market bubble this could be some evidence of that typically stocks should trade somewhere around what that intrinsic value is because in the modern world there's a lot of good information available and people are able to calculate these numbers and predict what companies are worth they shouldn't trade too much over their intrinsic value so what we see here is that Nokia, despite all the hype, is likely overvalued.